picture's different now, but I thought I'd read this out loud. Drowning in rubles, cause drowning in debt. Our dear Putin's puppet now says taxes? Yet. So now, Mr. Comey, if FBI smart, a big probe in DC's affairs, DT's affairs, you must start. For treason's the reason why DT's so vile, as our banks won't loan him for quite a long while. He stiffed even kids he employed but to sing? A Trump Doral paint job? An H rally thing? His campaign staff's wages DT wouldn't pay. So how many others does DT betray? He needs to be vetted or he shouldn't run. We don't want our country beneath Putin's gun. Remove him from ballots and GOP too, for they should have vetted DT and his crew. Freeze all of his assets until we can see how much and how long he's been Russia's latch key. Now, I'm going to explain a couple of things. <clears throat> drowning in rubles because he's drowning in debt. I got links to show that. I gave them to Joe Bob, and I can give them to you. I keep a record of that. It's in my timeline. Um, taxes, and yet, of course, today, Donald Trump says he won't release his taxes. And it's really important he do that. Because the taxes show you what deductions he make he makes and he's six hundred and thirty million dollars in debt so that means he's paying interest question is to who think think about that for a second if he's paying taxes which he has to be He's got deductions, and it's by the deductions that you know what he's doing. And deductions are made on business transactions. Interest is one of them. Um, all kinds of things you get to deduct from your business. So that would tell us something about what business interest he's got. And since he's got so much business with Russia, it's going to be kind of important since this guy's running for President of the United States. He's supposed to be putting his assets in a blind trust. That technically doesn't apply to him until after he gets elected. But, um, you know, if he's running and he's making nice with Putin, we need to know before to see if we should elect him at all. And obviously the answer is no, we should not vote for this guy. So now, Mr. Comey, if FBI's, FBI is smart, Comey was the guy who headed the FBI investigation into Clinton's emails. Donald Trump doesn't do email. He doesn't know how to operate a computer. He doesn't know how to operate a smartphone. What we see in Twitter, somebody else is typing. But the FBI can investigate things other than email. And they should. And we're talking about the involvement of a foreign country in the election of a president of the United States, and they're not being secret about it. Now, my guess is, given how um, Russia has historically operated, that was part of my major in college, that when they move in a positive direction towards somebody, they really mean the opposition to win. And when they move in a negative direction towards somebody, like toward Clinton, they want her to win. It's, it's the way Marxism works. You always do the opposite of what you should be expected to do. It's called thesis, antithesis, and that leads to synthesis, the reaching towards your goal. Okay, treason's the reason. Well, that's why we need to see the tax return. Is he doing anything treasonous that we could find? Because there's a lot to argue he is. Hold on. The reason I say that is because he's already under investigation now for potential tax fraud related to this thing called Bayrock, which is in Trump Soho, which is where the $1 million vet donation went. It allegedly went to a scholarship for veterans that just happens to be handled by the vice chairman of Soho, Trump Soho, which Trump doesn't exactly own. He's got a stake in it. It's got his name on it. 
but a lot of Russians are involved in it. So maybe we got some kind of at least fraudulent violation of code section 501c3 because it's the vet donation thing and it's not being necessarily used as a vet donation. All right? And there's a lot more that's already being investigated about how Bayrock, which is one of the companies involved with the Russians, is structured, particularly with reference to Donald Trump. Because a lot of the structure has to do with saying that his stake in it, his equity stake, is a loan. If it's a loan, then there's a then he doesn't he doesn't owe taxes. If it's an actual equity stake, he does owe taxes. And what the arguments being made by the New York guys is that it's really equity, which makes it look like a loan in order to get out of the taxes, which is fraud. Now, if that's true, then, you know, he goes to jail. But it takes months for that to happen. It'll be after November. So what's going on here? Excuse me, the air conditioning's making me cough. <laughs> All right. So what's the story here? Well, we don't know. But here's what we do know. Next line. As our banks won't loan him for quite a long while. He hasn't been able to get U.S. bank loans since 2005. And we know that from articles, like I said, I have links I can give you. When U.S. banks will not loan you money, I mean, you know, if you're really worth $10 billion, they want to loan you money. Because whatever you're going to spend that money on for the loan is going to cover an asset they're going to want to get if you foreclose, if you don't pay. But he has so often stiffed on his loan since 1980s. They don't even want to loan him. That's a big, bad sign. If the guy's even worth a billion dollars, it'll be a shock. If the U.S. banks won't loan to you, you have other ways to get money, but they always come with much more strength. Like fancy people like George Soros, to whom he owes $160 million. Then he's in, he's not technically in hock, but uh, Icon bailed him out, Prince Talal of Saudi Arabia bailed him out twice, according to Prince Talal. You can find that in Twitter. Talal's own account. And then there's the Russians. <clears throat> We've all heard kind of rumors and stuff about the Russians. They're kind of brutal. If you happen to be a debtor to them, that's not a good thing. Okay? Really not a good thing. But if you can't get money anywhere else, that's why the first line, drowning in rubles because drowning in debt. He's $630 million in debt to such Putin's cronies. And there are other connections like at Trump Soho, which I just mentioned, but there are many other little projects all over the world. And even Donald Trump Jr. admitted that they were, quote, disproportionately invested with the Russians. Yeah, well, we need to see that. You can't be running for president of the United States and have all these foreign interests. And as I think it was Politico or Mother Jones noted, the, other, the only other bank that he's, he can get money from is Deutsche Bank. That's Germany. Okay, you can't have that kind of conflict of interest as a sitting president. Okay, you just can't. And more indications that he's drowning in debt is the fact that there's the kids that sang, the Freedom Kids, that sang at his Arkansas rally. And that's all in the news right now. You can just Google on it. All they wanted was a table where they could display their songs and books so you could buy it. He wouldn't even give them the table. So now they're suing him because they had to pay for everything themselves. 
They had to pay their own expenses, you know, and it costs a lot of money to fly a bunch of kids to a location and back. Not to mention the food and the hotels and everything else. He's going to stiff little girls. Of course, there's a rape case pending. I'm not sure I believe in the rape case. But he knew Epstein. It was supposed to have taken place on Epstein's Island. Did it really happen or is it made up? Well, the courts are going to find out because the case is filed and accepted. It's not being dismissed. He stiffed kids. So it's kind of easier to believe he might have raped one. You're going to stiff little girls who you hired to sing at your rally and you didn't even pay them anything. All they wanted from you was to set up a table at, so they could display their stuff and they and you wouldn't even do that? This is not somebody we want in office. I don't care what party he is. It happens to be GOP, and I'm no longer GOP for that reason. But this is not a man that you want your kids to see. Four years this man would be in office if he lives that long. Kids, remember. I remember. I was 10 years old when Kennedy was shot. I remember. The presidents make a very big impact on a child's life because of the television and all that now. You have to take that stuff into account when you elect somebody. This is not a man who should be elected. And then a $34,000 paint job on Trump Doral. He wouldn't pay that from years ago. 15 years ago. Finally, the guy decided, okay, I'm going to have to sue you. And the thing actually went the whole of Trump Doral, which he just lost. That was the head the head golf course that was used for the PGA. And the PGA finally said, you know what, we're not renewing with you. And they're now going to be renewing in Mexico. So he, lo he was on the verge of losing Trump Doral, which is worth millions of dollars, for a $34,000 paint job. And they managed to stop it from foreclosing. But you know what the judge said? Hi, you don't owe just $34,000. You owe an extra $300,000. And I'm sure he added interest and stuff like that because the thing's been going on for years. Trump stiffed that? This man is not, not only not a billionaire, he, he can't handle money at all. You don't do that. You just don't. And you certainly don't stiff kids but be, at refusing to even set up a table for them. This is, this is something massively wrong with this man, but it's not just him, it's his whole family. His whole family is as bad as him. And then the NH rally, the New Hampshire primary, NH rally thing that you see in the upper left hand corner there, or sort of middle left. There was a rally that he held in New Hampshire primary. He has yet to pay the bill for renting the space. That was February. You know? <clears throat> it's like, what? His campaign staff, one of the guys he hi he just fired, a Sam Nunberg, I think his name is, they were withholding his wages. They weren't paying him his wages. And he's supposed to be a campaign staffer? They wouldn't pay his wages. He finally quit. I don't know if he's gotten his wages till yet. Yeah, yeah, I'd quit too if somebody said, well, here's your pay, and then you don't get any pay. This wasn't a volunteer staff. If he's going to stiff people like this, what do you think he's going to do to his own voters? So how many others does DT betray? Well, he's certainly betraying America. I mean, this is the history of this man. Trump voters don't pay any attention to the truth, so don't be like them, because they're too far gone. They're obviously mentally ill and sick like him. All right, so now we come to the right-hand side. He needs to be vetted, or he shouldn't run. That should have been true from the get-go. Okay, but better late than never. Let's do it now. We don't want our country beneath Putin's gun. Look, he he is making cozy with Putin in all of his speeches. He's drowning in rubles because drowning in debt. 
His own son admitted they have a disproportionate amount of investment with the Russians. The articles will show that he's got $630 million in debt to the Russians, and the Russians meaning Putin's cronies in particular. His debt last year to the Russians was $300 million. His debt this year to the Russians is $600 million, which means he's living on that Russian money. Because he said his income in his Federal Election Commission filing in 2015, he said his income was $362 million. So most of that's Russian loans. See, in the FEC filing, you know, what's, what are they saying is the source of the money? If they give you a loan, you can call it income to make yourself look good. But it's not his money, so that means what? He's only $62 million? I don't know if it's exactly $300 million as the Russian portion. But this is bad, honey. This is really royally bad. So we don't want our country beneath Putin's gun. You know, a gun is an eye nowadays. Looking into stuff. Can you imagine what would happen if this guy were elected? Part of me wants to say that that we should make it some kind of law, except that, that sounds very much, you know, dictatorial. We should make it some kind of law that anybody who would vote for Trump should be locked up on voting day so they can't vote. They should be locked up anyway because they're nuts. But that's dictatorial. That's not the way God works. And then, and this is this is something that I think we should do for, for you know, until we get his, his investigation. Like, he wants to ban all Muslims from entering the United States until we know what's going on. Okay, well, until we know what's going on, remove him from ballots and remove all the GOP, too. Because they should have vetted DT and his crew. Now, that's kind of strong. Not all the GOP is responsible. But definitely the hires, uh, higher ups, and definitely people who back him. Anybody who backs him, who's who said, "Oh, I support Donald Trump," they should not be. They, you should not vote for them. Because why are they supporting Donald Trump when there's all this going on? It's not like this is exactly news. His support for Putin was publicly expressed in the first debate when he was asked a question about ISIS. He wanted to let Putin handle it. It was either the first or the second debate. I'd have to go look up which of the two it was, and I want to say it's like 10 minutes, possibly 20 minutes into the debate. He was asked that question. It's not like there wasn't time to vet this guy and figure out what was going on, but they didn't. So are they in Putin's pocket too? Manafort sure is. A whole bunch of the people that Trump hired for his campaign sure are. They've all got trails and breadcrumbs and all kinds of other ties going back to the Russians for years. Manafort helped Putin's puppet in Ukraine. Everybody knows that. So what's going on here? We don't know. So we should remove him from the ballots until we do know. That's like banning Muslims until they, you know, until we know what's going on. I mean, I don't believe in banning the Muslims because that's that's a stupid thing. A terrorist, if he knows that you're going to ban Muslims, is going to say he's a Christian. So it's not going to do any good. Not to mention that it's against our whole country's standard to ban people based on religion. But if somebody's a terrorist, and they know you're going to ban some particular religion, they're going to say they're not of that religion. Duh! Oh, are you a Muslim? She said to somebody who looks maybe Croatian. No, but he's still a terrorist. I mean, terrorists come in all shapes and sizes and colors and genders and all the rest of it. Religion is not a good indicator of who's, you know, who's a terrorist. And they won't admit it. You can't prove somebody's Muslim when they enter the United States. You could say, oh, I was a Muslim yesterday, but I converted to Christ last night. I had a magic dream. Because a lot of Muslims do. Now what? See, so we're moving from ballots in GOP2 for they should have vetted DT and his crew. Freeze all his assets? Now, that sounds kind of extreme. But see, if he's related to Russia, we should freeze his assets. What do we know is going on with those assets? Until we can see how much and how long he's been Russia's latchkey. 
Now, everything I'm proposing on this side of the ledger is really pretty, um, what do you want to call it, hilarious. But when you got a potential traitor here, treason's a reason. He shouldn't be allowed to run for office at very least. Unless he can release his taxes, which he won't do. Now, obviously, you know, you might think I'm wrong. Let me know. I'm so upset about this. Peace out.